You do, you, you pull Ender's Game, man. They fuck with you, you make it ten times worse. That way they'll never do it ever again. So welcome back to Mario Maker. <laughs> Mario Maker. <laughs> fuck with Nathan, <laughs> bitch. Oh, man. All right, cool. We're going to make a new... <laughs> Should we actually start that way? I think so. Oh, no. All right. Uh, Let's start this timer. So, hey, welcome back to Mario Maker, terrible. everybody. So, um, um, yeah. we're back to making levels. Yeah, buddy. Um, today, we're talking about having a, what, concept or a theme to your level? Yeah. Um, yeah, concept and theme. So, um... Presentation. Was that it? Concept and theme, and it sort of ties into having presentation, right? Because presentation is basically polish, and polish is something that we pretty much can talk about with yeah. everything that we do. Um, we were bouncing around a couple of ideas, and this one, I think we decided on, well, I mean, we decided on before we started the episode, obviously, which means we decided on it last. But I was indifferent on it at first because it doesn't feel like a deep conversation, right? But actually, having a concept or a theme to your level is probably the most important thing um, you can do before you even start building your level, right? Um, because otherwise you're just aimlessly throwing blocks together, and then really, what's going on? Like, what what are you accomplishing by doing that, right? You're doing this, you're, you're being Nathan, it's just not able to finish his own level. Oh, no, no. Yeah, keep talking about, about this. <laughs> so, so, um, it's, this is high concept design, right? Like, in a game design terms, that's legitimately what it is. Um, and so, basically, the point of having high concept design for your level is that it allows you to build your level around a single idea, right? It's going to prevent it from feeling really scattered and kind of all over the place. Um... So, I don't know. So I guess when they're... <laughs> I did not want to do that. Sorry. <laughs> I was really worried you were going to record me talking and like, oh man, this is going to be a weird level, man. <laughs> All right. I have played a level like this before. Oh, yes. Um, so, all right. Let's first talk about... Wait, can I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all on Yes. Here. I got another controller, so now I can just like... Play whenever I want. What do I do? I uh, uh. Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> What's the cat thing? It's the cat paw. But how do you how do you get that? Um, it's one of the sounds. It also to, like, causes an animation to happen. I don't know what to do. Why isn't it? So editing. <laughs> no. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, this is a pretty good example. Like, what's the what is the the concept behind this level? Um, Jump this... on a a springboard and or trampoline and win. Yeah, it's it's basically uh, look at my library of sound effects, which <laughs> is like the worst thing because everybody has that. So um, uh, well, yeah, and... you're not you're not really getting an experience other than maybe a uh, that's silly. Yep. So uh, let's first talk about uh, sound effects. Um, highly recommend you don't put anything like that until you've already designed your level because it will distract you and you will get obsessed with trying to make a sound effect happen at like a certain way or certain unless unimportant. Unless you're building your level around those sound effects. Then I would argue it makes a bigger difference. Yes. I don't know if you should do that in Mario Maker, but... Consider okay. I mean, this, that's maybe this that's is, just me. This is kind of an abstract concept, but consider um, consider a maze, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're presented with a million different options. What if those sound effects are your clues to navigating? Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of what I mean about like if you're gonna use sound effects as part of your core design, use them. Don't just slap them around and make them. They should be arbitrary. absolutely instrumental. They should mm -hmm. be very important. Uh, instrumental so is a good word. They are instruments. Yes, and so it's not to say that. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, it's not to say what Nathan was saying where you should always, you know, postpone putting things... Like, sound effects aren't just polish, right? They yeah. often are, um, but other times they are essential to making your level design work. So that leads me into... You should have Eddie here. Yeah, right? Man, you'd have a ton more to say about this. <laughs> a missed opportunity on our part. Maybe we should have waited for this. Eh. Screw Eddie. All right, so we have like the series of sound effects, right? And I just kind of threw them down, and like that doesn't do anything. But there is one that actually has 
some amount of purpose to it, and that is this guy up here. It is the ding ding. It is letting you know you did hey, something right. You did the right thing, mm -hmm. and I've seen that in a few different stages, and I like it every time it happens, especially when they're multi door levels, or as I like to call them, where's Mario levels, um, because they feel like the game where's was it where's Mario finding Mario? No, where in the world is it was like where's Mario? It was a weird mod of a. Are you talking about the the like you one where Mario's Luigi. in in no. I thought you were talking about the one where Mario's in San Francisco. And it's weird, dude. This there it was a it was a game that was on the Super Nintendo. You played as Luigi trying to find Mario and oh. you would go from like you'd go their doors and you'd end up in weird countries and stuff. And I think, I think I what happened is somebody about. hacked Super or the Super mm -hmm. Mario World and they made this and it was actually surprisingly decently popular. Mm -hmm. Um anyway, so <laughs> Um, so yeah, so these sounds like, right, they're, they're, they're useless, they don't do anything, and l literally all they do is annoy the player and distract them. So next I want to talk about presentation. Um, so, right, look at my coins. Coins are important in Mario because not only do they reward the player in very slight ways for following a certain path, but they tell you, tell the player, which direction they should probably go. Uh, <laughs> and right now I'm being told I should go, whoa! Uh, 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 and in okay, fact, so there might I even guess. be coins that you can't get. I no, guess. maybe you can get all those. Alright, so even if I... Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Uh, ee, I can't even... Yeah. So, and then I should go this way and then down? Oh, you're telling the player they should go down to get the lowest score, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it contradicts its own design, right? Yep. Um, And so, in doing so, it makes the level feel cheapened. Like... It feels like you can't get the best score because there are impossible scenarios. I can't get that coin at the bottom and also get the top of the flagpole. So you can do this a number of ways, right? You can. You, okay, so we have the clunky method, which this is. I'm like this is another way of not to do it, but this is much better than what I just did, right? You're taking your coins and you're gonna be like, oh, look at this. What you're supposed to do is go all the way up there, and then you're supposed to jump and. Look, and then use that, and there you go. Now the player knows exactly what to do. Well, congratulations, you just held the player's hand. <laughs> you just built a, a breadcrumb trail. It's terrible. So then, <clears throat> I mean, you could not do anything at all is another option, and that's also actually, in this case, because it's so simple, I would say that's fine. Yeah. But, I mean, if anything, maybe you would put a coin on top of that pillar to be like, hey, this is a place you can reach. Not all players may realize you can jump that tall or that high with uh, the trampoline, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So that's an incentive to explore. Um, but that's also not what this episode's about. No. About presentation. And right now, I would say, actually, that's that's it. That's literally all I would do. Mm -hmm. Right there, bam, say, hey, you know, this is ideal. And you don't need to put anything on the trampoline because people see a trampoline, they kind of want to jump on the trampoline. Um, I yep, mean, I right. guess if I didn't want you to jump on the trampoline, I'd do something like this. I mean, if it were me, I would just be like, Oh, trampoline? I'm just gonna... <laughs> Wait, what do I do? How do I win? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's good. <laughs> so, going back to the topic of high concept design and having a theme for your level, um, the, the question is, where do you begin? And that's, I mean, that's the artist's question, yeah, right? That's exactly Where do you start it. with anything? Do, um, do you take the simple approach, build from the beginning forward or the end backward? Do you meet in the middle? And that's just the direction. That's not even talking about what inspired the level. And I think a lot of players for Mario Maker get inspired by um, other levels that they've played, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I think that's why it's a very common, almost trope at this point. In Mario Maker levels, to trick, to build levels around tricking the player, um, and that's why we see a lot of levels with like hidden blocks, right? Where you know they're cleverly placed in the spots that just happen to be where the player's going to hit. They hit it, and then they fall to their impending doom. It's terrible. It's, it's so mean. It's that's a high concept, though, right? Like that's a decision that they make before they start building the level. The the designer says, "I want to build a level that's going to piss off players." and be extremely difficult. Yes. 
Yes, and, and as long as they're fair about it, it's all right. It's, yes, <laughs> yeah, and like, there's an audience for that regardless, right? There's going to be players that want to figure it out. It doesn't matter how pissed off they get in the process. They're going to do whatever they can to figure it out. Now, you can still have good and bad design with that. There's a lot of designers that will just... They'll do that, and then they'll slap a million monsters in it, and it's a chaotic mess, and it's just <laughs> garbage, right? Um, and then there are designers that do it really cleverly. If um, the, One of the best examples is uh, Kaizo Mario. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's not Mario Maker. Oh, yeah, it was a it was a it was like a hex it was a ROM, Mario essentially. yeah exactly. Um, I've been watching um, what are they called Super Beard Bros on YouTube. Check them out. They play through Kaizo Mario, and I'm impressed that they have the patience for it. Um, <laughs> but Kaizo Mario is an awesome example of m making putting maximum difficulty in in a game, but it's still being very well designed. Like, it's it's crazy, um, because it's basically impossible for the average player. I would never be able to do it. Um, but I watch it, and I'm like, that's genius. It's so genius. Can I? What did I just do to him? I don't know. Did the color change? It just purple smoke. Um, like, cut sending out flies. Oh, it's the- What?! The flies, oh. Those geez. are the Mario Paint flies! Yep. Oh! You know what? Looks like we're gonna do a video on this. I've heard about this, but I've never actually- What?! I'm so excited about this! I didn't know this was a Mario Maker! This was my favorite thing about Mario Paint! It was. It Dude. was amazing. We actually get something for finishing this. Really? Yeah. Is it tough, though, like Mario Paint was? It gets tough. I've seen it. I, I don't know everything about it. I feel like it's got to be a lot easier, though, since we can actually see it on the touchpad. Yes. God, that was... The interface was half the difficulty of that game. Congratulations. Was that the whole thing? Nope. Maybe? No? Oh, dang. <clears throat> should we... Should we do this? Is, is Should we keep this in the episode? I don't know. Man. I don't know how long this is going to be. I don't know either. Maybe we'll make this a bonus episode. Yep, looks like we're going to have to, like, cut it and come back to this. <laughs> we're going to make a bonus episode on this at some point, because this is awesome. So, try again or quit? Quit. Save this for another time. Oh, man. That's fun. Okay, so I did not know that we couldn't. But... I, I had no idea that was I, a thing. I found out, like, last night, and I forgot about it, so it was like, oh, nice. Cool. So, um... So should we continue on with the this this level design stuff in the next episode? Yeah, probably. It's kind of like last episode where we just mostly talked about it and then showed a bad example of it, and then the next one we actually started working on it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what's going to happen here. Cool. Anyway. Well, we will episode. we'll we'll talk about more um, um, high concept design. Oh. Uh, and theme, theming, theming and presentation. And presentation. <laughs> cool. See you guys in the archives. So what do you think our, our concept should be? So I actually was thinking about something that is inspired by this. So... Things... There, there are a number of stages that kind of do something like this, and I actually usually enjoy them. It's basically... It reminds me of like going on a quest. You, do, you get an item that makes you invulnerable to a portion of the stage in some way, and you have to be clever and utilize So it's item. an equipment quest. It's an equipment quest, yes. Okay, I did that, actually. 